In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Console One MK3 as a dedicated MIDI CC controller for your favorite plugins in Cubase. From the date of uploading this video, I'm currently using the latest version of the Console One system, which is version 2.598. Make sure you have this downloaded or a newer version installed ready to go. First, click on the display button of your Console One to bring up the software interface. Then click on the settings button. Scroll down inside of the menu until you see door control. Click the OK button on your console one to open the menu and turn on all the relevant settings. Then click OK to confirm. Go back to the settings menu, scroll down until you see the use MK1 slash two as MIDI controller or with OSD. Click OK on this to confirm the settings. For the changes to take effect, you'll now need to reboot your system, then open up Cubase. Create a new project in Cubase and in the lower zone under the MIDI remote tab, you should see the console one listed as a device. However, we'll need to create a new device in order to get the MIDI CC functionality working. Click the plus symbol to add a new device, then add a new vendor. Give it an appropriate name. For this, I'll just call it MK3 MIDI device. And for the model, I'll just do the same. Next, we need to set up the MIDI ports. For the input, choose the MIDI in for the console one. And then for the output port, choose the MIDI out for the console one. Then click create MIDI controller surface. Now we need to add a track in the project and then load the console one plugin onto the insert slot of the track. Next, we need to assign one of the CC controls to a module on the console one. To do this, just hold the load strip button and click on one of the modules. In this case, I'll do it for EQ. Scroll down to the MIDI CC, click OK, and then choose a bank of CCs to assign. Going back to Cubase in the MIDI remote, make sure you're in edit mode, choose the knob, and then wiggle the controls on your console one and it will start to map them directly. You can also hold shift on the console one to go over to the second page and while holding shift, wiggling the knobs, you can assign further controls. Little tip, if you do a shift select, you'll be able to grab all of the controls you've mapped and move them around as needed. Here you can see I've gone ahead and mapped all of the modules of the console one with CC controls. And now we're ready to start mapping Cubase functions or plugin controls directly to them. For this demonstration, I'm going to insert a plugin after the console one, in this case, Solid State Logic's SSL Channel Strip 2. And then if we open up the remote mapping assistant, we can start mapping out these controls. To do this is pretty straightforward. First of all, you need to wiggle one of the controls on your console one. In the mapping assistant, it will highlight in blue so you can see what control is currently selected. Then wiggle the plugin control and hit apply mapping. And there you go, you've now mapped it. You can also do the inverse, wiggle the control first in the plugin, then on your console one, then hit apply mapping. A behavior you may encounter is that when you turn the control on the console one to the right, the plugin goes in the opposite direction. To fix this, just go down to the min max values and inverse them by clicking on the button, and then it will behave correctly. This next bit is really important for this to all work. I'll duplicate the track and open up the second instance of the channel strip. And you'll notice when I wiggle the high pass filter, it's affecting the first tracks and not the second one. To solve this, we need to go back to the mapping assistant. And for the mappings that we have created, select them and then change the focus mode from fixed to track selection. You'll need to do this for all the controls that you map if you want the console one to interact with either Cubase or the plugins you have on the channels correctly. So here on the second track, you can see we can control the plugin. And if I switch to the first track, we can now control that as well. Another thing to be aware of is if you're using plugins like ProQ4 that have a MIDI learn function, these won't work. You'll need to manually map them as I've shown you using the mapping assistant. You'll also find if you remove a plugin from the insert slot that you've mapped, the mapping assistant will say the controls are missing, but when you load the plugin back in, it will reconnect with the plugin, allowing you to control it as normal. 